Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to print my Summer Touch inserts. I just got a whole bunch of new ones to try out from Marushka and so I am going to be printing out a whole bunch today and I'm going to show you how it is done. If you are feeling a little bit nervous, don't worry, this is super easy. So we're going to start with a couple pocket size. These ones are pretty simple. So this one is number 2300, the gift giving insert. And so you'll see there's just four copies of it on page one and on page two, same front and back. And I do want to print this front and back um, and just sort of have it in there, both sides. So I'm just going to go ahead and print page one first because I do not have a printer that can do automatic duplexing. So you want to make sure that it, you either select actual size or custom skill 100%. Um, because otherwise it might shrink. It's a little hard to tell if that's shrinking or not. Um, and you want to make sure that it's exactly the right size so that it fits your dimensions. So let's go ahead and print page one. All right, now it's time to flip. You'll notice the way this came out, we have the top on this side of the page here. And we want to make sure that the top stays on this side of the page when we flip it. So we're going to flip it this direction. My printer just feeds directly through. If yours flips it from inside, you might find it necessary to make a little mark in pencil so that you can tell which way it went in. If yours goes straight through like mine, then it's pretty simple. You just have to make sure that you know uh, which side it starts when it's not printed and then what side it comes out and make sure that you keep the top side the same for both. And we're going to come back here and just print page two. Actual size and we begin. Now I can head, go ahead and start printing the second insert while I'm waiting for the first one to print because this is going to be a separate piece of paper, so we're all good. So this is the Future Appointments, uh, number 1800. And again, this is the same thing, front and back. There's just four copies of the insert on each page. You can fit this many with the pocket size. Uh, larger sizes, obviously, aren't going to be able to fit quite as many. So let's go over to the printer. So the first one printed great. We've got the top side here and on the top over here. Now insert number two. We're going to go ahead and just flip it straight the same way we did so that the top is at the top. Exact same thing for insert number three. This is 1513, the health log. So far, all of these are exactly the same. All right, so for these next inserts, I'm going to be showing you how to resize inserts to get the size that you want if it's not offered in the store that you're looking at. So my Summer Touch does offer some mini Happy Planner size inserts, which is what this is. This is my content calendar. Her name is Hermione. I did a video about her on Thursday or last week, um, so go ahead and check that as well if you're interested. Um, she offers a couple of inserts that are in this size, but not everything is available in this size right now. She does offer to... Um, edit things for you, but I figured it's easier to just resize it because she does offer a few sizes that are very similar and just need a little bit of tweaking. So I've picked two different sizes from the shop. One is Franklin Covey Compact and one is Personal Wide. So this mini happy planner, four and five eighths by seven inches, and then the Franklin Covey is uh, four and a quarter by six and three quarters. Personal Wide is four and three quarters by six and three quarters. 
So very similar, but significantly different uh, if you have to worry about printing and everything fitting. So this is the math that you want to do if you want to resize inserts for yourself. You take the size that you have the insert in, and then this is the size that you want it to be. So we're doing some very basic algebra here to figure out what do we need to do to this number to make it this number. So you just divide by this number on both sides, right? You solve for x. This is x in a percentage format, because that's what we're going to be using when we're printing. So you want to make sure you calculate it for both, because you're only going to use one of those values, and they're probably going to be different, because um, some inserts are more square, some are more rectangular. You want to choose the smaller of the two values. That will guarantee that everything on your insert is going to fit within what you're cutting. If you use the larger one, you're going to end up trimming something off either the top or the sides. So for the Franklin Covey size, we're going to be using the, uh, the long side multiplier, which is 104%. And for the personal wide size, we're going to be using the short side multiplier, which is actually shrinking it just 97%. So as you see, it's very similar, but this is going to guarantee that everything fits on this page size. So we're going to start with this Franklin Covey size. Um, I have here insert 2100, all my routines. I have this in the pocket size and I love it and I wanted to use it in my content planner as well for some of my content planning routines. So this is another one of those basic um, same on both sides kind of inserts, but you'll notice that because it's a bigger size from the pocket, where the pocket insert has it tiled, you know, four to a page. This is only two to a page. As a result, this is also in landscape instead of portrait. But my printer's still going to print it in portrait, so we'll see what that does. Let's go ahead and start with page one. And now instead of selecting actual size, we want to select custom scale. And like we looked at our um, calculations here, we're going to do 104%. Just size it up very, very slightly and hit print. All right, so two things. First, you're probably not going to notice a size difference with a 4% increase, but it is slightly larger than the Franklin Covey Compact would have been. The other thing is because this is printed, um, horizontal instead of vertical. With the vertical where we had the top on this side, we flipped this way so that the top came out on the same side of the paper. Here we have the top on this side of the paper, and so we actually want to flip it this way so that the top stays on the right side here. So that's just something to keep in, uh, you know, keep tabs on that if your um, the top of the page is the short end you're going to want to flip this direction on the long end and if the top of the page is on the long end you're going to want to flip the short end and we're going to print page two make sure that we're still scaling to 104 percent here we go So we have the top here and here, all set. Let's go ahead and print this next one. This is also a Franklin Covey Compact. This is insert 501, and it's just two grid pages with, that are on a flap. So I like this flap for my Gantt charts. Um, I previously used an insert that was a trifold, and so it was a little bit too narrow. Uh, but go ahead and check out that video I did about Gantt charts, and that will tell you a little bit more about what I'm doing there. But this is going to be the same size, so the same scale, and let's go.
And then we're going to do next, this is the personal wide size of insert 1101, which is um, a yearly list format. And this insert has a couple of different like formats depending on the size. I believe that in the pocket size, this one is a trifold fold out. Obviously that's not going to work for something wider because the page just simply is not long enough for that. So this one, it looks like you do cut and it's just going to be back to back pages. So let's go ahead and print the odd numbered pages first. So this is a four page insert, but since I can't do duplex printing, I have to print pages one and three first. And according to our math, the personal wide, we want to scale to 97%. We're going to make it just a little bit smaller. If you don't care how this works as long as it does work, please ignore this upcoming explanation. But this is something that confused me a lot until recently, so I have finally figured it out and I'm going to tell you exactly how this works. So this prints page one and page three. It pr prints page three first so that page one is on top when it comes out, right? Um, so it prints it backwards. My thought then was, okay, I'm going to flip it and then I'm going to print them backwards, do page four and then page two. But that actually doesn't work because, so you've got page one here, you want page two on the back of it, three, you want four on the back. You flip it, now you've got page, um, page three here, page one here. You'd think four, two, but no. Again, it's going to collate it so that when it prints, it'll print here page four, and then page uh, two on top of it. If that makes sense to you, then you are smarter than I was last week when I tried to do this. So it's as simple as this. It comes out, the paper, uh, out of the printer, you have your odd numbered pages, good to go. You figure out which side you need to flip on. This is horizontal. The top is at the long end of the page, so we flip on the short end. You just take the entire stack and plop it in. Then you come back. and you select the even pages just sequentially exactly the same. Now we're doing two and a four, also scaled to 97%, and here we go. And here we have it. We need to flip them again like this. But we've got January, February, March, April, May, June, all good like that. The only thing that could mess up a little bit of a hitch in this process, if you're doing a whole bunch of pages and you're worried about paper conservation, um, and if you find that sometimes your printer tends to pull two pages at once instead of two, that might happen more often with thin paper, I'm not sure. Um, but I have found that to sometimes be a problem and in the effort to conserve pages and conserve ink and not waste anything I will just do all of the odd numbers together, but then do the even numbers one at a time I printed an entire year of calendars that way and it took forever But I didn't waste any paper so you can consider that an option too And now finally we're going to do one of my favorite my summer touch inserts this guy is number 1600, the goal workbook. This is in the Franklin Covey size, so we're going to be resizing it 104%. Um, and you'll see that this guy is six pages long. So it's the same. Um, this one actually does not have any fold outs. The pocket size does. Um, but this is going to be exactly the same as we did for the yearly list. So let's go ahead and print all of our even numbers. Sorry, oh, sorry, all our odd numbers first. One, three, and five. Custom scale, 104%. And all right, remember we just take the whole stack. We're gonna flip along the short end so that the top stays right here. Print the 
even pages. All right, now it's time to cut. So let's start with the pocket inserts. Um, these two, future appointments and health log, they're the same front and back, right? So these are pretty straightforward. I'm just going to trim them down the middle. Now you'll notice that um, page one of these inserts has the cut marks and page two does not. So if you don't like having the cut marks, you wanna live without them, um, you can always print page two twice if that's easier for you. You can also just measure it halfway. So this is a letter size page, so it's eight and a half inches wide, so four and a quarter would be half the page. And that lines up with the cut marks as you see. If you know that everything that you're cutting has the same layout like these two do, then there's no problem doing multiples at a time. And then, let's see, uh, I always do the second set, you know, the third and fourth cuts here, um, by measurement instead of using the cut marks. So my pocket size inserts are three and a quarter inches wide by four and three quarter inches tall. Some places, you'll see, I know like I think Peanuts Planner Co. inserts measure in millimeters instead of in inches and so the cut marks might not match exactly so I find that just doing everything by measurement instead makes things a little bit more uniform. These My Summer Touch ones do seem to match up with my measurements but again I still I just do it by measurement. And there we go. Now this guy is slightly different. This is the gift giving insert. Um, as you'll notice, this is designed to be a two-page spread, and I have it printed front and back. The way I actually want to use this is not next to each other, but having just one page front and back. So that means that I actually want this page to be on the right and, instead of on the left, if that makes sense. I want to punch on this side and have this gift-giving header on the right side and then flip it and have the page two be on the left side. And so what that means is I need to adjust my margins. And this is really easy to do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it's measured just for the sake of knowing. Uh, let's see. You kind of measure between space here. It looks like it's just under an inch. So generally, yeah, about half an inch would be a good margin. So I'm going to just sort of eyeball it. Honestly, that's kind of how I do. Um, let's start in the middle. And I'm just going to trim to about a quarter inch on this side. Again, roughly. Yeah, it's a little bit less. So instead of leaving the margin on this side, I trimmed it shorter. I can still cut it in half, so five and a half inches on this direction. And then our three and three quarter inches, sorry, four and three quarter inches tall and three and a quarter inches wide gives us a lovely half inch margin on the left. So you can do that with really any insert. If you decide that you want it to be on the opposite side of the page, you just have to be sure to plan ahead a little bit. And I've never been too precise with these measurements because, you know, I, I don't find I need to be. So again, I'm going to trim off the edge on this side. Is that right? No. Here I want my, yeah, I want my margin to be on this side. So I'm going to trim off this edge again. That's just a little something you can do. All right, and here are our pocket size inserts. I'm gonna sort of split this in half or so. 
Um, to punch my ring inserts, I use my trusty Rapesco six hole punch. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. I will link it down below. Uh, it does all kinds of sizes. It's adjustable, but I have it currently set to the pocket size because that is the size ring planer I use. I believe it can do up to about six pages at once. Four is pretty comfortable, so it's pretty sturdy. And it actually holds quite a lot of uh, holes before you have to empty it. I often will forget. And there we go, all set to use. Next up, we're going to cut our Happy Planner inserts. So this one is the same um, style or the same idea of just basically cutting it down the middle. Um, you'll notice, obviously, that there's only two pages instead of four, so it's gonna be fewer cuts. And we don't just cut down the middle here. So the measurement the page is, again, eight and a half inches. And the planner is seven inches. So I'm going to trim three quarters of an inch off each side. So we measure here to seven and three quarters. And here to seven inches. And when you've resized something, here we go, four and five eighths inches, by the way, for the width. When you've resized an insert, you want to be extra sure that you're cutting by measurements, not by cut lines. Because you will notice uh, on the side that has the cut lines, they're inside our margins here. And so if I had cut there, it would be shorter than the rest of the pages that we've got. That discrepancy is the same reason that we wanted to use the smaller um, resizing percentage of the two because if we had done the larger percentage we would have expanded it farther this way to fit the width but then the height would have run off the edges of pages so um, I think it's better to have a little bit of a cut mark inside the printed area than it is to uh, to run out of room and cut off some of the good stuff so we printed these in a stack, and so they printed easily, one, two, one, three, and then two, four, but then we have to flip the pages this way. Uh, there, yeah. Flip them back to put them in the right order. Not that it matters, these are actually the same cut um, down the middle. If you're going to cut multiples at once, make sure you fold them together this way. More than once I've accidentally done something like this, where you trim off this edge and suddenly realize you've cut the wrong page too far. So, here you go. Keep your margins together. Beautiful. Here we go. January, February, March, April, May, June. Everything worked out in the end. Perfect. Alright. This guy is one of my favorites. Um, again, we're going to have to just turn the pages like this. Yeah. So this is the, um, the goal planning workbook. And I'll just kind of wax on about this guy for a while. It's one of my favorite My Summer Touch inserts, even though I don't use it very often. Or I, I keep wanting to find ways to use it more. Um, it's a really cool concept. And the idea is to just find a goal that you want to work on over the course of up to six weeks. And so I actually have started using it for some month-long goals in January. And I'm printing it on the large size so that I can try to use it for some goals for my channel. And it's just really cool. Let me show you. Let's see. Here we go. I believe this is correct. So first, 
you have a little bit of a worksheet here where you um, sort of define what the goal is, ask some questions about like why you want to reach it and all of that. Then on this side, um, a little bit more specifics, you know, budgets and, you know, measuring measurements of like what are the win criteria. I like this, define the goal in a positive way as if it had already happened. Visualize your goals, um, space for like a little calendar and countdown. I think, I'm not sure, I feel like I would want to use either one or the other. Little space for notes here, and then for every week, you have week one, space for tasks, space for a tracker, um, some figures as far as like how much has gotten done that week and percentages. And then on the back there's space for notes for that week, some like journaling and stuff, and then a couple of evaluation questions. So how did it go? What was unexpected? What will I do next week? And then at the end, are we going to continue next week? Are we going to keep this goal going or is it time to shelve it for now? Um, and so that goes on for six weeks and I think it's a really cool and well-designed insert. It's been in her shop for a long time, so if you haven't checked it out, definitely do. The last one we're going to print here is a fold-out. And so these are slightly different. Uh, I'm going to see, let's start by trimming the top and bottom just by measurement like we've been doing. Three quarter inches off the bottom and off the top. Now I want to start by trimming the outside edge. I'm just going to use the cut mark. You can also eyeball this if you want it to be a little bit tighter or have a little bit more room. And then what I will generally do is I actually will fold it first. So I look at the cut mark, make a little notch there with my thumbnail, and then just very carefully align everything so that both edges are flush. Give it a nice fold. And now this folded edge is going to be sitting flush with the rest of my pages. And so I'm going to turn it like this and use this edge to measure to four and five eighths inches like this. And that will give me the correct margin on that side. So here we go, whichever, whichever direction you want to fold it. You're all set to go. So this is going to be for the Gantt chart that I made a video about just this last Thursday. Um, and I, in that video, was using a three-page, like, trifold, which was too narrow for the Happy Planner. So this one fits better. I just like the idea of it being flush with the edge of the pages. So this is what I'm going to use for next month. So for the disc planner, I just have the Mambi uh, Happy Planner Punch. So this one, it kind of handles fewer pages. Let's start with three, see how that goes. And since this punch that I got was the full size, not for the mini, I just kind of eyeball it between the two on the ends. And give our seven punches there. There we go. That is how I cut and punch my inserts for ring and disc planners. Um, I hope that gave you some good information, some good ideas and advice on resizing, on switching things up just a little bit, and a couple little hacks there. Um, and so if you found this video useful, click the like button. I hope I earned your subscription. I post videos twice a week um, about my planner system, and I use a lot of my Summer Touch inserts. So come on back and I will see you in the next video on Thursday. Bye!